Thank you for attending today. I hope you get a lot out of this session. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Lewis. Okay, I've unmuted myself. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, awesome. I'm going to attempt to screen share and then Jennifer, you're going to have to probably unshare me because I don't think I know how to do it. So let's see if I can make this happen. I just wanted to real quickly show you a couple of photographs that I've made in the last 24 hours. Um, let's see if I can make this work. And the reason why I wanted to share these with you is because it's everything that we talked about. Was it last week or the week before? Whenever it was. So I'm in Moab, Utah right now, and I'm here on a seven day photo assignment. And I'm here photographing this athlete. His name is Scott Jerick. He's a professional uh, distance runner. And our mission is to spend a week together. We're working our way from Moab to Boulder, Colorado over a seven day period. Now I realize that this is a nature photography class, totally get that, but this is nature photography. This is outdoor landscape nature photography with a runner inside of it. It's all of the same ultimately. Let me just quickly go through these things. The, the principles that we talked about in our meeting are all happening right here. If you recall, I wanna shoot from dark to light. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but uh, this dark foreground into light area and the light is coming towards him, raking across the frame and creating all of this texture. So, and he's positioned in this bottom third of the frame. This is the basic stuff that we talked about uh, two weeks ago. Um, looking at the direction of light, using the direction of light to create dimension um, and texture, and then framing the, the, the rule of thirds. Here's the exact same thing, opposite direction, right? So now he's being lit from behind. I'm very conscious and aware of the direction of light, intentionally trying to make this is called rim lighting or pencil lighting behind him. You guys all seeing that? Yeah, give me a thumbs up, making sense? Same place, same exact shot, just a different action. So this would be an interesting photograph with or without Scott in it, or if there was another subject in there, a tree, a plant or whatever. Here we go again, look at, this is backlit. So you see this rim lighting that is bringing him off of the background and he's placed in, in this third of the frame. So just basic rule of thirds. Here I am breaking the rule of thirds and putting him dead center. However, he is on the bottom third of the horizon line, right? This is everything we've been talking about. So placing the subject in the bottom right-hand side and you can see, I guess you can see this whole photograph. Um, and so it, it goes from, from dark to light and it, it, it has lines that take you into the, into the photograph. Same thing, same thing. This is different, this is a silhouette. We shot this last night. Um, simple, simple thing. You, when you see a silhouetted situation happening, this could be a tree, this could be a, a Joshua tree, this could be a, a plant, this could be an animal, whatever. The literal subject, it's not that important. Um, so I saw the sun setting and I exposed for the sun and the sky and then put the subject in there, had him run across a few times. And then because I'm exposed, exposing for the sky, everything in the foreground is gonna be underexposed and it's gonna create this silhouette. Pretty cool, huh? Same deal. This is nature photography happening, except we are adding a subject and he's placed in that third, bottom third of the frame. Okay, that's it for those. Jennifer, do you, can you um, take me out of here and, and display um, the students' work? Is that the right term? Participants? Yes, sure. And, um, you know, I had an idea, you guys, as um, Lewis is showing us his photographs. There are so many wonderful samples of our work in this presentation. If you would like to vote for the, maybe the, the two that you like vote, that you like best as we go through, um, message me in the chat and I will make a tally at the end and maybe um, I can you know, promote it or display it if it's okay with you. Another thing I wanted to ask you um, for land trust um, promotional purposes and our social media and whatnot, um, if there's anybody who is not comfortable with us, the land trust sharing their work, please, message me 
chat and let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that it, that's okay. Without further ado, um, I'm sure you guys are going to love this uh, presentation. As Jennifer's doing this, I want to apologize because I'm in a restaurant and I just came in from working out in the field for the last two and a half days. I'm gonna to have to order a sandwich so I can stay here. So you're gonna hear me ordering. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, can I please have a hot turkey and cheese sandwich and fries? Okay, so um, the way the presentation is organized, it's um, the photographer's name comes up first and then there's two to three images that um, were submitted by that person. So we're starting off with, um, oh, with Ann Burrs. I'm not sure if Ann is here, but that doesn't matter. We'll just go through this anyway. And um, if you wanna, you wanna keep track of the ones you like best, make a note of it. Okay. Ann Burr says, yes, I am here in the chat. Oh, good. So I'll just, I'll look at these and I'll react. And so, uh, Anne is absolutely seeing the light. You know, that's what we talked about the other day, that the first thing that you want to do is to identify the light source and the direction that light is coming from. And Anne used the light in a very awesome and creative way. Um, and she's creating texture across this surface. And she's created um, these diagonal lines that lead us into the photograph. This is everything that I asked her to do. It's happening right here. Also photographing sort of from dark to light, which I think creates depth and dimension. Also placing the subject uh, on the top third of the, of the horizon. And this is a, horizontal, a vertical composition. And oftentimes in nature photography, it's, it's hard to come up with a, with a nice looking vertical composition. So this is great. And this is, I don't know if you're new to photography or what your story is, but this is everything I asked you to do and great picture. Thank you for sharing. I like this also, and this is another example of placing the subject matter in the, in the, the bottom third of the, of the composition. And then also commend you for not putting the horizon line right down the middle of the frame. That often bisects the photograph. So we have, you know, two pictures going on at one time. Here, it's obvious um, that you were seeing the horizon line and you placed it on that top third line. That's a very, very good thing to do. So another great image. Thank you. Are you there, Jennifer? I'm here. I advanced the I advanced the presentation. Are you able to see this driftwood in the coastal photo? I can now. I can now. Okay. Yes. Well, this is great use of the of the um the orientation of the camera. So again, a vertical photograph, it's often hard to do in nature photography. I think it's, I think it's very courageous of you to turn that camera up, uh, especially in the nature photography situation. Um, it's an interesting picture. And it's, it's in my mind, this is just a study of, of texture. And it's great, keep going, keep doing what you're doing. Okay, next photographer, Bill Bain. So let me tell you, this is great also. Notice the, the shadows on the ground. So, I'm sorry, the photographer's was, name was Bill, I think, right? So Bill is seeing the direction of the light and doing exactly what we talked about the other day. He's shooting towards the, the grain of the light. And by doing that, it's what's creating all of this texture look at the mountains in the background and you can see that it's beautiful texture, gradiated light. 
And that's caused by shooting against the grain of the light. Had he shot with the grain of the light, meaning that the sun was at his back, it would flatten all of that out and it would not be as interesting as it is. And then same thing, he was able to put the horizon line on that top third line. And that's exactly what we wanna do. And then this is obviously a study of the rule of thirds. He listened, he did it perfectly. Another thing about this is that the colors are, are really well saturated, meaning that the greens are deep green and the color and the texture on the tank are perfect. This is a beautiful photograph. And I'd say, keep going, keep doing this. You're on the right path, at least in my mind. Next photo. It's taking a minute to load. I'm not sure what you guys are seeing. This is um, three trees in the subject. Kind of like- I'm not I, seeing that yet. Yeah, there's a little bit of a delay. Another great landscape. Uh, now I can see. Now I can see it. So it's a monochromatic photograph. And what that means is it's all, um, you know, it's black and white. So in this case, it's more like brown and white or sepia tone. And that's a really cool effect. I think that part of the, our assignment last time was to capture texture. And again, this, this, is, this is great. Everything that I've said is happening here. Again, the horizon line on that top third, not dead center. Also, I like the composition with the trees having that um, sort of angled framing. I don't have much to say about this other than it's a very beautiful landscape photograph and I'd love to have this hanging in my house. Good job, very good job. I don't know if it's taking time for these to um, load on your end, but it's taking me a minute to see them. Anybody have any questions while I'm waiting for this next frame to pop up here? Is everybody able to see the, um, is there your view okay? So the way it's presenting? Good. I can now see um, the next one. So there's another rule that we didn't talk about, another rule of composition and it's like balance. And so this photographer understands that or saw that somewhere or just stumbled into this. But the idea that we have a large subject in the foreground. Thank you, my sandwich is here. Not right now, thank you. Um, anyway, so the idea of balance. So a large um, object in the foreground and then balanced by a smaller one in the, in the background. Had that barn or corral structure not been there, this photograph may have kind of fallen off. The composition may have been empty over there. So I really like the way that the objects are placed in this, arranged in this. Also, the lines, we talked about leading lines taking you from one part of the photograph into another part of the photograph. And this is done perfectly. All of those diagonal lines are taking us straight to that corral or that barn in, in the background. Um, one of the reasons why the colors are so saturated, the browns are really brown and the rust is rusty and the green is green, it's because of the subtle lighting. So this is diffused lighting, right? So the sun is being diffused by this, uh, the clouds or the green layer or whatever it is that's diffusing the light. And when, when you have that situation, you often get this really, really saturated colors. So you can predict things. If you, if you do it long enough and you know different light sources, you can start predicting how the photographs are gonna look before you even start um, activating the shutter. This is a beautiful image. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Luis. Appreciate your comments. Thank you. Good work.
Okay. I see a vertical composition with shorebirds. And what's great about this is there the birds are the leading line sweeping us into the photograph. Another thing to think about, the last image that we saw with the bills had those very sharp diagonal lines leading us into the photograph. Awesome. Now what we have is a curve. The, 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 the line leading us in is a soft C curve. That's the next step in photography is start identifying masculine and feminine shapes. And that, that's the term that they use. Uh, straight diagonals are, are often to, uh, referred to as masculine lines. And then curves are referred to as feminine lines. And so that's pretty much what we have going on here. And then again, the idea of turning that camera over and photographing in a vertical composition, super cool. Um, one thing I would say, if I could critique, let me try to look at it closely. Leave, go ahead and leave this one. Well, okay. So in on my side, it looks a little bit soft, which means not out of focus, but the depth of field is really minimal. So that the aperture of the camera was very wide, which means that there's not a lot of the pictures in focus. So in this particular one, the foreground is a little bit soft and the bird in the center of the frame is a little bit sharper. So that tells me that that's where you were focused and probably with a wide aperture. So if you want everything in focus from the front to the back, you want to use a, 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 a small aperture. So a high number, small aperture, like F16 or F22. That is a discussion for another time. Let's see that next picture. Me, my French fries. Mm -hmm. Same thing, very similar to um, the last photograph. Again, commend you for turning that camera over and then placing the subject in that bottom left third. It looks to me like you were listening to what we were talking about last week or the week before and you put it into practice here. Perfect. Same deal, same comments as the last one. Great image. Super fun. Mm, I like this one too. So this is what we call, what I call negative space, right? So we have this empty space and then one obvious subject. It's a really cool thing to do. Similar to that sunset photograph that I showed you earlier, that the sky was very, very simple. So just a lot of negative space and then placing the subject in there and the subject really jumps out. It's obvious what I want you to look at. So in this case, it's very obvious what the photographer is wanting us to look at. And I saw in the chat, somebody was asking, is this sunset light? Well, whether it's sunset, sunrise or sunset, it's, it's very subtle and angled. This is probably right before the sun came up, but more likely right before the sun went down or immediately after the sun went uh, over the horizon. Either way, it's awesome. And the colors are very warm and saturated. And again, it has to do with that. We call that the golden hour light. Great work. Ooh, so now this is, this is stunning because it's backlit. So similar to those photos I showed you of that guy running lit from behind so that the, the direction of the light is coming from behind and then that backlights the subject and it makes it really pop out and then when you put a backlit subject against a dark background it really adds depth and dimension good job with the light direction and good job with the composition and placing the subject in that bottom left third hope you guys can hear me this is interesting, right? We don't get to see things like this all of the time. I'd say it's perfectly framed. The idea of the rule of thirds and placing him on that top um, left intersection. Seems like you were listening to what we were talking about. 
Good work. I hope these comments are what you all wanted to hear. Everything's working here, right? This, the idea of the leading lines is awesome. So it's taking us from the foreground and taking us all the way to the back of the photograph. Photograph, You're creating three dimensions on a one dimensional surface. Very nice. And you know, whoever did this was thinking and, and taking the time to compose it in the camera and using the flags, the reflections in the water. It's great. It just makes it very interesting. Good work. So at this point, I think we all can know that this is a silhouette. And the way that you create a silhouette is by exposing for the sky in the background and then putting a subject in the foreground. And because we're exposing for the background, whatever's in the foreground is gonna be underexposed and it's gonna create the silhouette. This is great also, because what I asked you to do to go from dark to light, you're doing it. So there's, the bottom of the frame is dark. And then instead of lines leading us into the photograph, the light is leading us into the photograph. Keep doing it. I haven't seen the switch yet. Any questions? Well, oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I can see it now. So this is everything, everything that I was asking for. You have texture in the sky. The reason why the clouds are so dramatic is because they're lit from behind. And you can think of it in two ways. You can think of it as adding light or adding shadows. And so this, by adding shadows, is what creates depth, dimension, and texture. So those, those clouds are so dramatic because of the direction of the light. Then this same photographer put the horizon line right on that bottom third, perfect, and then placed the subjects in that bottom left third uh, quadrant or whatever you would call it. Um, and so it all balances. This is everything. This is a silhouette. This is uh, using the rule of thirds and using the direction of light to create texture and depth. Really nice. Uh-oh, Jennifer's pictures. So here we go. This is real similar to the photographs that we saw of the birds on the beach, another a vertical composition. And Jennifer, I looks like you were thinking and you saw those leading lines taking us into the frame. Perfect. And then placing the subjects on that top third. So it doesn't, you don't always have to place the subjects where those lines intersect, like we talked about before. But, but try to place them in that, on one of those third lines. So on that top third, bottom third, whether it's vertical or horizontal, if it makes sense to put the subject where those lines intersect, do it. But this is great too. It's wonderful. <laughs> This is just a, a, a great photo that you were able to get that close to this, this little squirrel. <laughs> I think it's great. All the same comments as before. Keep doing it. Ooh. So again, this is a kind of use of negative space. So we just have this blank canvas, the sky in the background, and then placing uh, the subject in there. It's a obvious sometimes simple is best right less is more and so that's what we have going on here another thing anytime you can put opposites together opposite colors it's a good idea to do to do that you've all seen pictures of aspen trees with bright yellow leaves and they just look stunning it's because those yellow leaves are placed against an opposite color which is blue so 
a dark blue sky like this, anytime you can put yellow in there, yellow is going to pop. So that's kind of what's starting to go happen here with the face of this bird. But just put that in your mind. Think about the color wheel and put combinations of opposites together, especially in nature. And then it really, it, it, it accentuates color. Great shot. And good use of a long lens too on that photo. So this is, not everybody would do this, will shoot straight into the uh, source of light. I love doing it. I do it all of the time. Know the rules and then break the rules. And then you end up with something beautiful like this. So all of this texture is created because the light is coming at the camera, creating shadows in the foreground and creating all this texture and depth. Ken listens. We've done photography together before. He knows what's going on. Having shooting from dark to light is awesome. So the bottom third is dark and then it obviously goes off into the light. This is great. Ken, you could add a subject to this. You could put a runner in there. You could put a car driving somebody on a bicycle or whatever. This is just a great composition. My dog is somewhere behind the bush there. <laughs> oh, hiding in there somewhere. I, I'm assuming you did this on a run up in Romero or somewhere like that. I think that's that the country. Papa Cold Springs. Old man now. Yeah. Great, great work, man. This just works, right? Remember when I talked about the most important element of a successful image is impact. Everything else is secondary to impact, but you just look at it and go, whoa, what is this? And so this is a successfully uh, impactful image. Placing the horizon line on the bottom third, I feel like I'm just repeating and repeating because that's it. And then all of this texture in the sky has to do with the direction of the light. This is a great image. Thanks, Ken. You guys all know what I'm gonna say. So we have these feminine S curve taking us into the frame going from dark to light. And then the light source being behind the rock coming at the camera is creating all of the texture on that rock and that's what, and, and on the water. And that's what makes this thing interesting to look at. Also, whether it was intentional or not, the shutter, this is called dragging the shutter. So the shutter was open for probably about a quarter of a second. And by leaving the shutter of the camera open, it creates this, milky texture of the water. What you're doing is capturing the movement of the water. I'm gonna guess this was on a tripod because the rocks are, are in tight focus, but the water's not. That's because the camera lens was open, the water was moving, the camera lens closed, and it captured that movement. This is just another great photograph. Ken listens. Uh, this is just a great example of, you know, action and freezing the frame and just wonderful rule of thirds. Who, Meredith, I, I know that you were seeing it and thinking, and this is hard to do with a moving target. So as you're composing, you're anticipating where that subject's going to be. And it looks to me like you were intentionally putting it in the, in the, in the top third and you did it. Great. So this is a cool thing to do, and that's to put a subject right in the extreme foreground, right up, right up on you, and then have this background fading off. This is really, really cool. And this would be an example of what you would call selective focus, meaning that the aperture of the lens was open wide enough that the foreground, the subject is in focus, but the background's not, it's out of focus. So this is called selective focus. So whether you did this intentionally or not, I don't know, but because the center of the image is sharp and in focus, that's where you go, that's where you're drawn. And then the background just falls off softly. Using the aperture, that's a 
subject for another time, but that's one of the most important and most valuable tools that we have as photographers is the aperture, the f-stop. And using that aperture, you can direct the viewer's eye um, wherever you want by using selective focus, and that comes with uh, manipulating the aperture. Hope this is all making sense, and I hope you can hear me. This is very similar composition to, I think it was Bill, with the farming. It was a wagon with those diagonal lines leading us to the barn in the background. This is the same type of composition is going on here. So also commend you for shooting against the grain of the light. So the shadows are coming towards the camera. And in my mind, that creates, again, depth and dimension. Three dimension, it, it creates an illusion of three dimensions on a computer screen. Great work. Just so beautiful, all the color and texture and the varying light. What makes this interesting is the variation in light across the landscape. Gradiated from light to dark, to dark to light. And because of the clouds and the light is being diffused, it's creating this deep saturation in the color. Just like a couple of the images back, we saw the same type of thing happening. It's predictable. You can come to a situation and say, okay, I see this light, I see the direction of this light. This is gonna create a very, very saturated image. The color is gonna be deep and rich. So I'm start looking for deep and rich colors. And that's what's happening here. And great composition by putting that top horizon line on that top third. Spencer. Well, I think one of the things that I asked for in our last meeting was uh, rule of thirds, direction of light, and texture. And this is a fine example of texture in nature photography. This would be considered abstract, right? So it's just a piece of something. And the literal content, the literal subject, it's not that important. Remember two weeks ago, I was showing you pictures of vegetables that were interesting to look at. It doesn't matter what we're photographing. It matters how we photograph it. And so this has impact, even though it's very simple. It has impact. It's very interesting to look at. You can see all kinds of different shapes within this shape. It's just a fine study of texture. So thank you for sharing that. I see a gorilla face. Ooh, so this is a great um, example of using the rule of thirds. And I commend you for getting down there. A lot of times when people are photographing things on the ground, they're photographing it from up here looking down. You have to get down there. So whoever you know took the time to get all the way down on the ground and get right up next to this, great. And really thinking about the rule of thirds. This is also a good example of... Um, selective focus. So obviously the subject is very tight and in focus and then the background fades off. Um, it's a great image. Simple, beautiful, easy to look at. This one's a little underexposed. <laughs> Is that all of them? So it, it, that's it. Um, let's see if I can stop sharing here. That was it. Completes our, you know, grouping of the ones that were submitted this time around. Hope everyone enjoyed it. We have some time for questions now, more questions or um, conversation. I suppose with cell phones, I don't have a Mac or I, iPhone, sorry, <laughs> but you mm -hmm. can't just, uh, they probably have tools to adjust F-stops, I would guess. 
if I, I have to investigate it. I was using my cell phone. Sure. So there's a saying that cameras don't take pictures, people do. And it doesn't really matter. I mean, having different tools, you can create different effects. I can make beautiful stunning imagery with my cell phone and with my, you know, very, very expensive DSLRs. It's, don't worry, just keep doing what you're doing. Think about what you can do with that, cam with that phone camera is you can, you can study composition, direction of light, you can capture texture, the rule of thirds, all of that stuff you can do. What you can't do is very, you know, what the camera focuses on. You can't change the aperture, but that's okay. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, maybe someday you want to get a camera that has uh, where, where you can change the aperture, and then that just takes your work to the next level. But just keep doing what you're doing. Use the tool that you have. It's uh, it's not the arrow, it's the Indian, right? So just keep working with what you have. And then the day that you do decide to get a different type of tool in your hand, you'll be ready to move on to the next level. Yes, I, I have access to a beautiful 35 millimeter digital camera. Mm -hmm. I did the old way. I used to print myself. But um, mm. it's so the cell phones are so light. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're just like, sure, of course. That's, no. that's another old saying. Another old saying is that the best camera is the camera that you have in your hands, you know? So, yeah, I, I actually, I do a lot with my cell phone, believe it or not. Even like on this job, I'm here photographing. It's kind of an expensive job. And I've done some imagery with my phone and it's fine. It's totally fine. It's a 12 megapixel file. It's fine. Any other questions for me? I have a question. How was, oh, go ahead. Hi, first of all, I just want to say thank you. Um, sure. For taking the time to look at the photographs and um, I'm an amateur. This is, I'm really new to all of this, but I'm having a lot of fun. One of the things I wonder is when you, when I'm taking nature photography and I want to take a picture of a bird that's the same color as camouflage and it's the same color as the bush that it's in, let's say, mm. what are some strategies that you have or advice for me or us? Well, try to, you know, think about the light, the direction of the light. And if you can get the light, if you can position yourself where the light is behind the subject and it's going to backlight them or rim light them, that will help pop it off of the background. I photographed black Labrador retrievers on a white, I mean, sorry, on a black piece of seamless white paper, a black dog on a black background. And how you make that dog pop out of that background is by lighting it from behind and on both sides and creating shadows coming forward rim lighting, put the lighting on the back of the animal or the subject. So same thing with what you're describing. Think about the direction of the light. Shoot into the grain of the light. That would be my thought. Sure. Any other questions? Did you, was this a good experience? Um, I've never done, I've taught photography classes, but never just one day, you know, one hour, and then expect people to show up with great images. You guys did it. And was it good? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, you got me to think of the rule of thirds and looking at the light into the light and texture. I think those are three things that really stuck in my mind. Well, well hey, let me tell you something. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, Luis, as a, um, a retired educator, I just wanted to say thank you. You uh, you have a, a great tone with people and, and a very positive approach. And, and uh, um, I think you uh, probably make a very successful teacher. It was uh, it was enjoyable watching and listening to what you had to say. Well, that makes me feel very good. I have done some teaching 
uh, coaching, coached high school students for 15 years. So I have a little experience trying to capture people's attention and, and engage and engage with them. What I was going to say a moment ago is we're talk about the light, light source, the direction of light, composition, and finding texture. We're just standing on the front porch. There's a lot more to go and do. You know, this is those those these three things are just basic beginning concepts, and all of you have taken to it really really well. So I would encourage you to keep going. Find a photography teacher if you're really into it. But even simply, some something that you can do easily is just look at photography. Find a photographer that you like. Find some imagery that you enjoy, and really look at it study it think about these three things that we talked about composition light direction texture find that in imagery study it you can teach yourself a lot anything else i also enjoy seeing all your photos by the way totally cool thank you and then the thank you First time you showed us other photos too that were fascinating. Thank you. Well, I'm glad that worked because I realized what I was showing you was not necessarily nature photography, but it's outdoor photography. And my work, especially with athletes, is nature photography with people in it. So hopefully, hopefully the photos made sense.